right, 12.4 probability of compound events. All right, so compound events um, is the union or the intersection of two or more events. And basically, to show you with a nice little diagram here, basically what that means is if you have event A, which is the first circle there, and you got event B, which is the second circle, the union is everything, everything together in both. I mean, every little section of it is the union. However, taking a look at A and B again, the intersection of an event is everything that's only in between them, what they have in common. And that's everything in the middle. So, compound events. When we're talking about compound events, we are talking about or. Or is the key to this. Or is the key. When you hear the word or, when they are speaking in a problem, it says, what's the probability of getting an ace or a king? Okay, the key word there is or. That's how you know we're going to add, okay? But the probability of events, which you need to keep in mind, is if they have something that's in common, you need to take it out. So if I said, what's the probability of getting a diamond or an ace? Okay, well, there are 13 out of 52 diamonds, no problem. There is 4 out of 52 aces. So, yep, just add them together. You get 17 out of 52. But here's the problem. The problem is you counted that ace twice. You counted that ace in the diamonds. Then you counted that ace when you counted just the aces regularly. So you counted that ace twice. The point is that A and B means you need to take out what's in common. What do they both share in common? They both have an ace of diamonds, so you need to take one item out. So that means there is an intersection there. The other method down here is A or B. If I said to you, what's the probability of getting an ace or a king? You take 4 out of 52 for aces plus 4 out of 52 for kings. Now, the reason I don't have to take anything out is how many aces are kings? None. There are no aces that are kings. They aren't the same card, so nothing is the same. Because nothing is in common, and nothing is the same, I don't take anything out of it. And that's why those events would be called mutually exclusive. Those are mutually exclusive events because they do not intersect each other. So example one, a card is randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. What's the probability that it's an ace or a face card? Literally. Look at this as two problems. Just look at the first item. What's the probability that it's an ace? Okay, what's the probability that it's an ace? Four, right? Four out of 52. What's the probability that it's a face card? Look at the second one. 12 out of 52. So I set it up as 4 over 52 plus 12 over 52. Are there any aces that are face cards? No. That's why I'm saying this up here. There is no intersection because there are no aces that are face cards. Since there aren't any aces that are face cards, then there's nothing I take out. I simply just add them together. 16 over 52, which reduces to 4 over 13, which is 30.8%. In example 2, card is randomly selected from a deck of 52 cards. What's the probability that the card is a heart or a face card? Okay. So, we take a look here. Uh, how many hearts are in a deck? There are 13, right? There are 13 hearts in a deck out of 52. How many face cards are there? There's 12. So, what we need to now look at is, are there any hearts that are face cards? Because if so, we got to take them out because we're double counting them. And the correct answer is yes, there are. There are 13 uh, hearts and there are 12 face cards but they both share three face cards that are our hearts right the jack of hearts the queen of hearts and the king of hearts so when we do this problem I do 13 over 52 for the hearts I do 12 over 52 for the face cards and I take three out of 52 out because there are three cards that are double counted that are the same in both categories so when we do that we get 22 out of 52 which leaves us with 11 over 26 which is 42.3%. So the complement of an event, the complement of an event, um, all outcomes that are not what you are looking for, basically. You're looking for the opposite of an event. That little um, knob here, that little thing right there, that means complement, if you see that. Okay, That little item there means complement. 
So the exam before it says, um, when two six-sided dice are tossed, ooh, there are 36 possible outcomes. So what's the probability of the given event that the sum is not an eight? Well, think about this a little deeper. Two die are rolled. The lowest sum you can have is a two, right? Snake eyes, a one and one. So the lowest sum you can have is a two. The highest sum you can roll is a 12, right? 6 and 6, which means you have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. That's a lot of different numbers. And what it's saying is, um, what's the probability of the sum not being an 8? That means you need to find the sum of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You need to find the sum of all of those. Yeah, you can just sit there and add all, all the combinations and get your answer. Or let's think about this in reverse. So just saying the sum is not an 8, let's find the probability the sum is 8. So you can roll a 2 or a 6 or a 6 and a 2. You can roll a 3 and a 5 or a 5 and a 3. Or you could roll a 4 and a 4, which gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 36 combinations. So to find how many are not, remember this: the sum is 8 is 5 out of 36. 5 out of 36 are 8. So to find out the opposite, I take 1 minus that which is like saying 36 minus 5. So if I just do 36 minus 5, I end up with 31 over 36, which is 86.1%. To find the sum that is greater than or equal to 4, okay, keep this in mind, greater than or equal to 4. That means I'm finding the sum of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. That's nine different sums I have to find and add them all together. Or I could do the reverse. I can find the other sums. Instead of it being greater than or equal to 4, there's only two sums that I need to find, the sum of 2 and 3, right? That's why I have this here. So finding the sum of 2 and 3, the sum of 2, there's only one choice, 1 and 1. The sum of 3, there's only two choices, 1, 2, and 2, 1. So basically when I add those up, 3 out of 36 are a sum that is 2 or 3, the opposite of what it's asking me. So if I do the complement, I can find 1 minus that, or 36 minus 3, which is 33 out of 36, 11 over 12, which is 91.7% of the time. So, four houses in a neighborhood have the same uh, model of garage door opener. Each opener has 4,096 possible codes, so what's the probability that at least two of the uh, four houses have the same code? Well, once again, the opposite is what we're looking for, the complement. The opposite of one or more the house is having the same code is none of them. None of them have the same thing. So it's a probability that none of them have the same code. Well, the total number of combinations is the first house, house 1, has 4,096. House 2 has 4,096. House 3 has 4,096. House 4 has 4,096. So basically, that is the total the number that they aren't the same, the first person has 4,096 choices, but the second person, he can't choose one of those codes anymore because if he chooses that code, it's going to be the same exact code as the neighbor, so he only has 4,095. And this person only has um, 4,094 because he can't choose what those two did, and this person only has 4,093 because he can't choose what those three did. Meaning, is 4,096 because this is the none the same, this is what that number is on top, over total combos being the same. So we actually end up with 1 minus that, because this is of none of them being the same. So the, the opposite of that is 1 minus that. So 1 minus 0 0.99854 is 0 0.00146. So there's your homework. Um, I hope that this helped. If you have any questions or concerns on the complement, the complement is probably the most challenging part of this section. But if you have any questions or concerns on complements, or using or as in adding them up and finding things that are alike, please feel free to email me and let me know.